Always enjoy hearing that music on a Wednesday afternoon. That means it's time for Helping Seniors of Brevard. And to get things started, here's your host and the Executive Director of Helping Seniors of Brevard, Carrie Fink. Good afternoon, Carrie. Hey, John Harper. It's so good to be here as it is every Wednesday around uh, lunchtime hour right here on 90.3 FM WEJF. And uh, we want to welcome those listeners who are joining us, John, also as well, uh, who listen online. And it's a growing number there, too, at WEJF.net. And of course, uh, there's a big family of listeners who uh, find us as a podcast, because as soon as we're done with uh, broadcast, we make sure this gets out on every place that you get fine podcasts. So you can look for us on any place from YouTube podcasts to uh, Apple iTunes and so on and so forth. Just look for Helping Seniors Radio. And this is going to be a good show today because we have one of the most dynamic and eloquent and knowledgeable uh, guests that we uh, have the pleasure of having on the radio. It's none other than longtime friend of the Helping Seniors Organization. His name is Dr. Lee Sheldon. He's a noted area periodontist with Solid Bite Dental. And uh, how are you today, sir? Good morning, Kerry, or good afternoon, Kerry. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thanks. Good. Uh, Particularly well, gonna... with this topic, which has, which has gotten me into a little bit of controversy uh, in other parts of the country. So I figured I would uh, I would allow our local <laughs> listenership to be able to hear some of the controversies that go on even within my profession, and how it might affect you. You know, I always uh, smile when you say something like that because you're not afraid to uh, tackle tough topics. And I always also use this uh, term in describing this a lot because whenever we go to see a doctor or a dentist, the term that's often used is called practicing. You know, I'm practicing medicine. I'm practicing dentistry. I'm practicing periodontics. And I guess at the end of the day, when you use that word practicing, that does leave a lot of room for some people uh, are going to have a different version of how they do things. But you, Dr. Sheldon, are quite noted for uh, actually not only in your own practice that you've established for so many years right there on Sarno Road, and now Dr. Matt Sheldon and 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 Dr. Uh, Michelle Furtado are kind of like uh, excellent people who run all of that day to day, but you also spend a lot of time working with practices around the country. You, you go to different uh, conferences, you lead a lot of research and things like that. So I guess you really are kind of on the cutting edge of, uh, edge of controversy as well. I'd like to think so. You know, you cannot do what we do, and that is to try to go to the next rung without ruffling a few feathers. Um, you know, and if you're ruffling a few feathers just for that purpose, well, that's one thing. But if you're ruffling a few feathers because of patient care, and I'm not saying other people aren't as well, but when you do that and when you're going a little bit uh, uh, a little bit different from what others are doing, then there are some people who are going to question um, what you're doing. It, and frankly, in my career, i got to tell you, some people have questioned my motives even. So, um, yeah, I mean, it goes with the territory. Some people like it. Uh, like the controversies, some people don't. Some people shy away from the controversy because they don't want to, you know, they 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 want everybody to like you. Um, yeah, I want everybody to like me too. But <laughs> when I reach my limit, I reach my limit. So I reach my limit, and whatever happens, happens. It's it, it's funny for those of you who are younger. Um, if you think something is right, then throughout life, if you practice what you think is right, and I'm not talking about just dental practice or medical practice, I'm talking about any place, um, you know, you're, at my age, you're going to feel better about what you did if, in fact, you tackled those subjects where you knew things were wrong, but instead of going along with the crowd, you decided to make your own way. Yeah, you know, I guess it's I guess it's about following your convictions and then also uh, not compromising when you know something's not right. And I kind of want to dive into the topic today. I, if, if you're listening to this, first of all, I want to welcome you to the show on behalf of our president and founder, Joe Steckler, our uh, Nancy Deardorff, our operations director, Karen Wardenland, our information specialist, our growing team of volunteers who get behind us and help us in the work of the Helping Seniors uh, nonprofit. You know, we've been uh, Dr. Sheldon, you were there from the beginning with uh, 
with uh, Joe when he founded this. And of course, you were helping him just like John Harper was helping him back in the day uh, when he was actually building up Brevard Alzheimer's. But you know, when Joe started this, his vision was to make sure we got information in the hands of seniors that was going to make a difference for them fundamentally, both for them and their families and people who love and care for them. And so I want to encourage you, I want to welcome you to the show today, but I also want to encourage you, if you have a, a, a pencil and a piece of paper, we're going to have fun with this topic called You Can Always Extract the Tooth, and we're going to get into some controversy that Dr. Sheldon ran into with that in a moment. But also along the way, we're going to give you some behind-the-scenes information you're going to want to keep up with because, yes, the eighth annual Choose Your Adventure car raffle is uh, is now set, and it's actually kind of underway. Uh, There's a date you're going to want to keep in mind. That's Sunday, October 27th, and we'll get into that a little bit later in the show. I want to kind of dive in because... As, as I was opening this up, Dr. Shell, and talk about the fact that you do speak a lot. Uh, you're asked to speak at different uh, conferences, dental conferences, periodontist conferences. Uh, you've you've uh, worked with colleagues overseas on studies and things like that. But you were you were speaking about a case where you recently uh, caused a little bit of a of a stir uh, because uh, it seems like uh, whatever you said caused some people to go, "Huh? What's this all about?" Yeah, no kidding. And it does happen. By the way, the title of this um, <clears throat> of this uh, essay is, yes, you can always extract the tooth, but I'm going to make it even more controversial. <laughs> How about if we change the topic, Carrie? What do you think? Sure. We'll change the title. It. You can Good. always die. Did you hear me? You can always die. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> and we're going to cover that too, folks. So if you think we're just going to talk about a silly tooth, nah, we're going to talk <laughs> about the whole thing because okay. we're talking about what authorities say to you and how you should take what authorities say to you and say, well, does that really apply to me or not? So, yeah, we'll talk about it. You can always extract it too. So I'll, I'll set it up. Um, Because that's what Kerry has just asked me to do. So I'm part of a national group that, you know, that compares cases and looks at different things. And so somebody submits a case. Okay. So that's a dental case and puts the x-rays online and gives us some clinical information. And it was somebody who was, um, who had been a patient of this, of this dentist in the past. And, uh, the patient hadn't shown up for regular visits, so now 20 years later, the patient has lost nearly all of his bone support on many teeth. That's periodontal disease. And um, so wanted to know the opinions of others, and I quickly said there are ways in which we can save the teeth, and immediately was contradicted by, not directly to me, but said, I would extract all these teeth. This person needs to have all these teeth extracted. This person has horrible disease. These teeth need to be extracted. And then I retorted with something like a 1,600-word essay on how exactly I would approach (laughs) this patient. And then other people came on and said, yeah, I would do what Lee does. Yeah, I'd do what Lee does. I've done what Lee does before. Understanding that, understand that the three people who contradicted me are very well known in our field. I mean, they would be considered top drawer people. And so those people were authorities, people, people who were known, who were known by others around the country. And, oh, if this person said it, maybe what I'm thinking isn't really true. And then it took another person who believes he is also an authority, that's me, and say, hey, this is how exactly we do it. And by the way, we do these cases routinely in our practice all the time. And then others, other people of my specialty then had permission to say, well, yeah, I did what Lee did too, and it seems to work out okay. <laughs> so uh, when you're getting that opinion, understand that opinion is based on the feelings Maybe the experiences, maybe the person who is the authority never really tried it another way and so is locked into a viewpoint that may not be in your best interest or at least understand that there is more than one viewpoint. So if somebody says to you, you definitely need this, 
Well, you know what? <laughs> the first question I would, uh, can you explain that a little bit more to me? Can you tell me why? And uh, let the person at least defend his position. So that's the way we've set it up. The, the setup is, yeah, you need the teeth extracted. Um, somebody from Melbourne, Florida said, no, well, hold on for a second. Maybe, but maybe there's some teeth that can be saved. And um and then, then, then we move forward from there. So it is the value of questioning and maybe even the value of a second opinion that we're talking about. Yeah, we've talked about this quite a bit on some other on some other programs along the way uh, in in various shapes and forms. Because actually, uh, you did a TV show some time back called "Are Too Many Teeth Being Extracted," which probably has uh, some merit in the conversation today. But one of the things that I've really gotten out of the conversations that we've had is that you, as the person going to see the medical professional, again, it, I'm just being a little bit generic here because it's really the same if you go to a medical doctor versus a dentist or any other person that is in, uh, quote, that position of kind of expert knowledge and authority. Maybe it's even you're going to an attorney because it seems like the same thing. And we've talked about this so many times, Dr. Sheldon, that you have to remember at the end of the day, you are the customer and you do have a right to ask those questions and be sure that what you're being told is the correct next steps. You, You understand why they're saying that and why that's important that you would follow that or, or like you said, maybe maybe you've got questions and you you need to get that second opinion. Yeah, you do. I mean, we're, whether we, if we're talking about an attorney, I think that's a great example. We are all, and I'm talking about those of us who are professionals, are all the product of our experiences, or we learn from other people's experiences. And so, yeah. what we're sharing with you as the client or as the patient is the product of our experiences, and our experiences do are not necessarily entirely broad based. They may be very, very specific in the area that we're talking about, and so therefore, we may not have. Have the experience in the area where you need help, even though we're experts. I mean, I'm a specialist, you know that. So maybe I as a specialist don't have experience in a particular area. And so therefore I might think something because it's always worked for me, but I didn't necessarily try an alternative method and work with that uh, in order to see that there might be an additional viewpoint. So we're talking about uh, uh, particularly you need to extract the tooth. Well, why do I need to extract the tooth? What is it? You know, can you tell me the process as to why it's not bothering me? Um, so why do I need to why do I need to extract that tooth? Or particularly if a patient has periodontal disease and the assumption is a tooth needs to be extracted because the periodontal disease is always going to get worse, and you and I have talked about this a lot, Kerry, prevailing in this profession is the idea that you cannot control periodontal disease, that we don't know how to do it. And so therefore, you're going to lose the tooth anyway. You might as well lose the tooth now. That is the prevailing attitude among dentists in the United States. You know, as you were saying that, I was thinking about how important it is that we recognize uh, that that different professionals have their experience in a certain area. So I was thinking, uh, even as you were explaining that, how we've talked about a lot of times where, um, you know, first of all, I just think as a consumer, we grow up thinking we're going to the dentist because you're going to help us prevent cavities. But the longer I've known you and and how you approach things, the more I've understood well, the cavity stuff is 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 important, but what's really important in making the difference is what's going on uh, below the gum line because that's the real you know key to your health. And I, what I was thinking, at, you know, then a general dentist who doesn't have that that extra training that you go through on the periodontist level is is they're aware of it, but they don't have the same specialization. So they may take a look at a patient and think come to a totally different conclusion because they don't have that extra insight into what's going on below the gum line. Yeah, it's true. Uh, and we as periodontists uh, are trained for an extra three years, so we have to be doing something during those three years. Um, <laughs> right. But you're right. During that, during that period of time, understand – a big part of that, and when we talk, I, I grant you what you said, that very many general dentists do not believe that um, periodontal disease can be treated um, because they don't know all of the options that are available. That's why I, it's so valuable because we've got Dr. Furtado right here who goes out and is giving lectures to hygienists and to dentists mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. show them what 
what can be done. But it was interesting, even when Dr. Furtado spoke, and I hope I'm speaking for him correctly because it's now his practice, my son's <laughs> practice, not my practice. But what he did when he lectured was to talk about the fact that until he got here, he didn't realize how many teeth can be saved. Wow. In other words, in his training, his training did not necessarily bring him to the same diagnostics and to the same treatments that we do here. And so his viewpoint changed at least a little bit when he came here and he saw what can be done. Now, Dr. Furtado is a trained specialist. So what does that mean? He went to dental school for, for four years. He, For him, he did periodontal research and research on bone grafting. And, and I'm talking about research in the laboratory with the animals for five years. Wow. Um, <laughs> and writing in, 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 the, in the dental and the medical literature. And then... He practiced for a few years before before he came here. So we're not talking about somebody who came here directly out of school. Here's somebody who had many years of experience before he even got here. And yet he got here and so I mean, scratched his head a little bit and then saw some things here that he hadn't seen in all of those experiences. Just goes to show that... Um, Excellent periodontist, he wouldn't be here if he weren't, but then open enough to at least look at some of the ideas that we've developed here. And I'm not the only one. I mean, but there are people of my ilk uh, in different parts of the country and different parts of the world who, 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 who really do very, very well with dental implants, but also understand that, uh, that, that uh, teeth, um, that the body is capable of healing if we give it a chance. And that's with the natural teeth. You know, and that's and that's actually also a function of as the technology improves and that you have in your office in particular, you have a lot of tools at your disposal. I was thinking about as you were explaining that even with Dr. Uh, Michelle Furtado's um, experience in, in training and coming up, I was thinking like, you know, if you, just to make an analogy, if you go back to when we were kids and on your uh, fourth or fifth grade uh, exam, they asked you how many planets were in the solar system, we would have been marked incorrect if we had written anything other than nine planets. And so as telescopes get better and researchers are able to do more, they decided, well, maybe Pluto isn't actually a planet after all. So we're back to eight planets and some other stuff floating around in our solar system. And I was thinking that kind of goes back to the point uh, that you're making is as you get better tools to diagnose and see what's going on, you're able to look at things with much more accuracy and much more, uh, I guess I would say, predictable outcomes because now you're really seeing what's going on as opposed to going, I think that looks like a planet or I think that looks like a something. Oh, I think that's correct. Uh, but let me give you an, a non-technology experience. Um, and this was early on in my career. So when I was trained in periodontal treatment, periodontal treatment was clean the teeth and do the gum surgery in order to be able to correct the problems that occurred as a result of periodontal disease. And that was a prevailing thought. I spent some time with an older periodontist. His name was Dr. Perry Ratcliffe uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I watched what he did non-surgically, which I had never learned. I had never learned what you could do. He actually placed uh, strings between the gum and the tooth. He packed them down below the gum line, put some chemicals in there to retract the uh, t tissue even farther. Some of those chemicals were um, were uh, was an acid, citric acid. The other um, the other chemical was tetracycline, an antibiotic, and he literally retracted the gum so our hygienist could see better. And there was some kind of, I'm sure, some effect from either the citric acid or the tetracycline. We packed those cords below the gum line for several minutes and then retracted the gum tissue back. And all of a sudden, the hygienist could see things that they were never able to see before. Wow. And so I spent some time with his office and I saw what his hygienists were doing. And I brought one of my hygienists with me. And I came back and I said, and I announced at a Christmas party, uh, and I think the Christmas party was in December of 1987. <laughs> I said, for the next year, and I don't know, ended up only being eight months. So let's say for the next eight months, we are doing no periodontal surgery in this office unless the patient has an emergency. Then I'll do the surgery. All treatment is going to be non-surgical. Rebecca, you know Rebecca's name, my dear hygienist who created uh, all of the non-surgical 
uh, protocols in our office that have been so successful. Rebecca said, when I said that at the Christmas party on the third floor of what was then the Strawberry Mansion, she <laughs> said to me, we're going out of business. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that. And essentially we said, and I, but you know, I, I announced it to all the general dentists because at that time this is a for referral practice. We are going non-surgical. I hope you'll take the trip with me. And the, the furthest statement I was, I made was we're going to go non-surgical. And if the non-surgical treatment fails, I'll do the periodontal surgery at no charge. Okay, so I put my neck out there, too. <laughs> Over an eight-month period of time in what is a pretty busy periodontal practice, I did four surgeries at no charge. Wow. wow. I learned a heck of a lot from that experience. I understood that, it, that the body needs a chance to heal before we make decisions, that we need to give enough time for observation for the first treatment to be done. And the first treatment, the non-surgical treatment needs to be done really, really well. And so that that's part of the requ requirement. But then we just need to take a deep breath uh -huh. and we just need to observe before we make the decision on that surgical step. Now, that was in 1987. We didn't get the endoscope, the period, periodontal endoscope, which just allows us to see below the gum line better until the year 2000. So it was 13 years later that I got that. But it did give me the opportunity for observation. And in that period of observation, some of the assumptions that I grew up with in that profession, I was only 37 years old then, and now we can reverse the numbers because that's where I am now. <laughs> but some of those observations just stayed with me, and I was looking with my mouth open seeing a patient's capability of, he capability of healing if we just did the right thing. So when we talked earlier at the beginning of the show, we talked all of us, all of us authority figures, if you will, are the product of our experiences. You know, that 1987, yeah. 1988 experience totally changed that product of my experiences. My experiences were, were bigger. They were deeper. They were better and gave me a better opportunity of what the patient is capable of doing all by himself, all by herself, with just a wow. little bit of help from me. Well, uh, this is good. Dr. Lee Sheldon, noted area periodontist. We're going to continue the conversation on the second half of the show. I want to give uh, make sure people have a number if we're asking or discussing things and it causes a question. How do people reach your office? Yeah, we we love to hear from you. Even if you have a question, you don't have to make an appointment. Give us a call, 321-259-8000, and just let, you know, let everybody know if you want to make an appointment that you heard us here and you'll be able to come in for a an, uh, for a complete examination, including x-rays, CT scan, everything for a donation of $50 or more to helping seniors of Brevard County. I like the sound of that. And you're going to like the sound of the second half of the radio show coming up here in just a few moments, because we're going to continue talking a little bit farther with Dr. Sheldon on value of a second opinion as we keep rolling. And you're listening to the Wednesday edition of Helping Seniors of Brevard. I'm John Harper. Let's get back to the show right now with your host and the executive director of Helping Seniors of Brevard, Carrie Fink. And Carrie, a good conversation in the last half hour with your special guest, Dr. Lee Sheldon. Looking forward to this half hour. Oh, thank you, John Harper. Yes, it is a good conversation. And uh, whenever we have the privilege of visiting with Dr. Lee Sheldon, you know, there's going to be a, a, a good amount of uh, uh, interesting enlightenment and possibly even some controversy. And so we've been we've been enjoying that in the first half of the conversation. So on behalf of uh, Joe Steckler, our president and founder, Nancy Deardorff, our operations director, Karen Wernland, our information specialist on our whole team on the Helping Senior side. Welcome back to Helping Seniors Radio because we gather each Wednesday lunchtime on 90.3 FM, WEJF. And then uh, also, if you're listening online at WEJF.net, welcome back. And again, if you're in the podcast, uh, thanks for listening along. And if you missed any part of the first uh, part of the show, that is the good part of this is you can always go back and find these broadcasts uh, both on Helping Seniors of Brevard.org. That's our website, uh, the Facebook page and the YouTube channel, also helping seniors of Brevard or any place you get a podcast. And so um, 
actually, I want to kind of pick up where we left off just before the uh, mid-show break, Dr. Lee Sheldon, because this is near and dear to my heart, because as a nonprofit, we're always looking for funding to keep our little organization going. And you have an innovative way of doing that. I asked you to share uh, the number to your practice in case somebody had a question. And you reminded me of a program that you guys that does so much good in the community called Solid Bike Gives Back. And it does help, uh, not just the, the work of helping seniors, but a lot of good, worthy charities in our area. But basically, it means you as a person can get a really, really comprehensive uh, dental exam, get kind of a roadmap for where you are and where you're trying to get to uh, as far as that goes. But then also, Dr. Sheldon, that uh, enables your office to have the tools to really uh, correctly identify what might be the correct next steps for somebody and at the same time making it a perfect trifecta it creates it creates a uh, a donation directly into the work of helping seniors so talk just for a second about that and then we'll jump back into the uh the part of this we were really going to get to in the second half of the program about the second opinion talk yeah the the entire idea of solid bite gives back is to allow patients to come in support a local charity and helping seniors of Brevard is one of the charities that we support and be able to get the best dental examination that we are able to provide. Um, years ago, I decided that the only way I could see a patient is to examine the entire mouth. You don't come in for cleaning first, anything like that. Come in, you see me, I do a full evaluation. Now, you may think that the full evaluation means I've got to spend a lot of money. In some cases, you do. But in many cases, you don't. Um, and I can't tell you whether you need to spend a lot of money, whether you don't need to spend a lot of money. I can't tell you whether there, there, there are different options because there's almost always a low price option, a medium, medium priced option, and a higher price option depending upon the benefits that you want. I don't have the opportunity to do that unless I've done a full examination. So almost for the time I started, I said, I've got to do the full examination. But even during that time, I needed x-rays and things like that in order to be able to really come up with everything I could. So rather than charge a certain amount for x-rays and a certain amount for CT scan, I just said, good, $50 to charity or more, you know, before more. Uh, Fifty dollars to help me see sure. provide. Yeah, I mean, and there are people who say, "Hey, for that examination, I'm donating two hundred dollars," which is it's just very nice. But I want that opportunity for full examination and the opportunity to support to support helping seniors of Brevard, which is a charity that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, it, it it is a win win, and so that way, you as a patient come in, get the best that we can provide in terms of diagnosis and treatment plan. Whether you decide to stay here or not is your business, um, but at least it gives me the opportunity and our doctors the opportunity to provide the best that we can in terms of um, diagnosis, what's there now, and what the different levels of treatment you could have done if you chose to have treatment. It's a great opportunity for you. It's a great opportunity for us. It's the only way we would practice anyway. And a uh, great, great opportunity for helping seniors of Brevard as well. So it's very simple. You just call the office at 321-259-8000, and you say, I heard... Lee Sheldon, I help you seniors of Brevard. I'd like to have that examination that he does associated with charity. And um, our staff will know what to do and set you up for a, a nice visit, which is usually about a two-hour visit in that in the office in order to be able to provide the full assessment that we need. Yeah, what a great program, because uh, anything that helps helping seniors, I'm all in favor of. Uh, but let, let's kind of jump back into the basic conversation. We began uh, the show at the top of the hour uh, where we were talking a little bit about the idea that uh, – uh, you you yourself created some controversy amongst all the uh, the august body of uh, uh, the dental community uh, with something that you had explained or presented at a conference, and then you had actually a number of of um, uh, a number of uh, d dental professionals come and say, well, maybe it ought to be this, and then it's you know that's why we always talk about this. Is really, a great lead into the fact that these are. At the end of the day, um, a lot of times it's really opinions, well, very well-educated opinions, but at the end of the day, there could be a difference in, in how somebody wants to treat something, which really just right back to that whole conversation about the value of a second opinion, Dr. Sheldon. 
Absolutely right. The the doctors who countered my opinion are doctors that I would see if I needed surgical treatment done. I would see sure. them in a heartbeat. So I would have no hesitation. The question was, when is surgical treatment indicated and when is it not? And that would be where we differ. And my intention then is to continue educating in that direction because um, there, at this age, tender young age, um, I, these are friendships that I have. And while we disagree um, on what we would do, perhaps um, they don't have the experience that I do in some areas, and perhaps I don't have the experience that they do they do in other areas. But this very much had to do whether with whether a full mouth dental extraction is necessary or not, and they said yes, and I said no. Um, so then it's a matter of what can we do in order to be able to help the patient. There's a lot to a lot to be said, Carrie, for. Power of observation, power for mm -hmm. of taking a deep breath and waiting, power of doing something, even though you think it won't work for all of the teeth, it may be wor worthwhile for some of the teeth. So, for example, with this patient, uh, it was assumed that all of the lower teeth are going to be extracted, and this person was relatively young. And I looked at the x-rays, and I said, wait, take a look at this tooth. This tooth has good, good bone support. What about this tooth? All of us agree this tooth has good bone support. How about this third tooth? This tooth has good bone support. So at the worst, in my opinion, based on the x-rays that I was reading, we would be able to save three teeth. And I think we could do a heck of a lot better than that. But even if we saved three teeth... It's far better to have three teeth supporting a partial denture where the partial denture clips on those three teeth rather than a full denture, which literally is floating uh, and is held mm -hmm. in by adhesive. So e even in the worst case scenario in, a, in this patient where others are saying all the teeth need to be extracted, I knew we could save three if we did no, if we did no treatment at all. The neat thing is that in a patient like this, we could have saved, we could save eight teeth, or in my experience, we could save all of the lower teeth if given the right, if given, if we give the patient the right chance. And all it is a matter of doing what you're going to do, say, listen, I'm not sure how well we can do. I know we can save some teeth. I'm not sure how many. It's not going to cost us any more to try because we've got to do the same treatment on those teeth anyway. Let's just do this series of treatments. And then after we've done the treatment, now let's observe what the healing is before we make the decision to extract teeth. And when patients are given that option, saying, listen, we're in this together, okay? It's going to cost a certain amount of money for us to find out. I feel pretty good about it, that we can save some teeth, maybe not all the teeth, but we can save some teeth, uh, then patients are usually t able to, are willing to take the ride with me. And it's not that more exp expensive. As a matter of fact, to save the teeth is often cheaper uh, than extracting teeth. And when we start talking about dental implants, then it's definitely cheaper to save teeth than to extract teeth. So, you know, it's just a matter of looking at it, looking at it from an experienced viewpoint, everybody being willing to work together and and change perhaps habits at home and allow us to do the things that we do and just take a deep breath and watch and give the patient an opportunity to heal, um, then there are some very, very um, uh, nice effects that you can get from that kind of an approach. You know, this is really going back to, uh, I like what you said about really maybe cogitating over over the diagnosis and not like just rushing in. I know that when we were talking about planning in the show, we wanted to, to bring in because I think a lot of the subject matter we talk about while we may be talking about uh, the specific role of, of, of periodontist and, and teeth, but a lot of these are general principles that work well, uh, even if you're going to a medical doctor for some other reason. And we were talking about in the example of, uh, you had an example in your past of your own health and treatment uh, where you were talking about something that was being recommended, but you did further research and then you decided to, you know, kind of get your own second opinion going and said, well, maybe that's not the right thing for me to do at this time. Yeah, it's true. So I gave my, I got my own second opinion. <laughs> So I had a hernia. I still do. <laughs> I, I have a. I, I had an inguinal hernia, which was in the groin area, and I'd had one repaired oh, about 12, 15 years ago, something like that. And the one popped up on the other side. So I go to the surgeon. I said, uh, you know, I got a hernia, and it was assumed by me 
and it was assumed by the surgeon, you've got a hernia, you need to have it fixed. And so we had gotten to the point where the surgeon looks at me and says, all right, yep, yeah, we can fix that. And and that was it. There was no discussion at that point of uh, of observing. It was only, all right, we, we're all on the same page. We're going to fix this. So then I looked into the literature, and I looked at complication rate when this is fixed. And I'm talking about in my particular circumstance. So I am not giving you medical advice. Don't, uh, listeners, do not take anything I say as medical advice for you, but it is room for you at least to to think and discuss things with your doctor. So I did my own medical research. I looked at the complication rate with treatment. I looked at the complication treat without treatment, complication rate without treatment for this uh, procedure. And the complication rate was nearly exactly, the, in fact, it was exactly the same. So I said, all right, that gives me some time to see what I can do and see whether I really need to do this right now. So I canceled the surgical procedure. Interestingly, I saw a physical therapist because of a back problem, and the physical therapist reoriented my back, and now the hernia is not nearly as prominent and doesn't bother me at all, simply because the physical therapist very skillfully repositioned my pelvis, and therefore there's no not, not as much pressure. So does the hernia pop up every once in a while? Yeah, a little bit, but not much. Um, you know, maybe every few weeks, every few months, I can feel it a little bit, but it's not really a big deal at all. That doesn't mean you shouldn't have your hernia repaired, but it does mean that there are opportunities to look into the literature. And that's what's neat about the medical literature. Um, because in medical literature, it isn't just practicing by the seat of your pants, which very often we have to do, but also we can look into the background and into the published literature of your particular procedure or your particular illness in order to be able to see what's occurred in other practices because there are people in universities and even pri private practices who compile the uh, knowledge that they have and the experience that they've had into a literature article that all of us can access. And it's very easy for us to go to PubMed, P-U-B-M-E-D dot gov, G-O-V, and find articles that pertain to our particular problem, at least to get some background information so we can discuss this uh, further with our doctors. You know, that that is uh, so important. And it's, again, it's like, you know, we keep coming back to this position that as a person, you are really responsible for, um, you know, looking after, you know, you, you take all the input in and then you decide what your next steps are. So you really have to evaluate even what the professionals are explained to you. And there was another example you and I were, were sharing uh, about a friend of yours who had really a, uh, a, a really a devastating kind of prognosis and yet kind of took a step back from that and uh, really kind of thought her way through it. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so she, she, she's, she's hospitalized with some, and isn't feeling very good at all, and um, comes through whatever the hospitalization is, and she's in the hospital for probably a week, maybe a little bit less than a week, and then she's discharged to go see her physician, uh, and I'm sure the record records were forwarded to her physician, and her physician meets with her and says, you're going to die within three months. Oh, dear Lord. Imagine how you would feel if you were told by your physician you're going to die in three months. Hmm. And so the person has some chronic medical problems anyway, and so she also gave up on treating those problems as well. I'm going to die anyway. And so things got worse. There was another hospitalization. Mm. And then um, she sees a doctor. Actually, I happened to be in the room at the time. Saw a doctor who I know uh, is very well qualified. And um, through a series of events, um, was discharged, started paying a little bit more attention to details and what she should be doing and what she shouldn't be doing. And it's now six months later, and uh, she's running a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. So, you know, uh, and that's why we began the show, for those of you who are on for the beginning of the show. Uh, 
Um, you know, we talked about uh, the title of this lecture or this this topic is um, you can always extract the tooth. Um, and I said, we ought to say you can always die. The, <laughs> the, the real answer is, and this is part of what I wrote when I was working and when I was responding to this controversial topic about whether teeth should be extracted or not. And uh, what I said is we have to always consider that the body is capable of healing. We just need to give the body the opportunity the opportunity to heal. Now, an interesting story about this particular patient, I forwarded uh, her, um, her records to a friend of mine who, uh, who's a physician who also is in contact with experts. And that expert, and I'm talking about top expert, said, yeah, um, she has a particular problem. It's terminal. So even mm. that expert, I'm talking about a world expert, said, yeah, yeah, it's true. And it turns out that other tests were run to find out that the person who even declared that what she had heard was true actually wasn't true. Uh, and uh, biopsy had been done. And what was determined on the radiograph was on the x-ray was not necessarily true by biopsy. So um, – Understand, there are a lot of assumptions here, and you don't necessarily have to uh, listen to or agree with the first opinion, that there are other opinions out there, and you should at least get, particularly when it's a devastating problem, whether it's a tooth extraction, which can be devastating for some people, or multiple extractions, or whether it's even a life-changing um, Life changing event, or, or perhaps a, a prognosis of of no life anymore. There are opportunities to talk with others and to help engage your body's ability to heal, and maybe you can have a much better outcome than uh, than you were first told. No doubt. And I was going to say that's really the point that we wanted to kind of get in here. And I think uh, what, that that's really so important that you remember that you are in control of your own uh, medical dental care and making those decisions just because somebody says something doesn't mean that you necessarily have to accept it at the full face value. Take the time to really dig a little deeper and, and, and figure out and see if you agree with that, you know, and I think that's why um, I want to, I wanted to reserve a couple of minutes. So we will, we will uh, ask folks to get out a pencil and paper because I'm going to give some dates uh, related to some things that are going on with the helping seniors world. Uh, but, but to kind of button this part of the conversation up, Dr. Sheldon, I want to circle back one more time to the solid bite gives back. And if somebody is interested in getting a proper diagnosis and things that are going on and yet doing a good work for the helping seniors world, um, talk one more time quickly about that program. Yeah, Solace by Gives Back is the opportunity for you to come into our office, pay $50 to Helping Seniors of Brevard, just write a check, and get a full examination, including all x-rays, including a CT scan, and the be the benefit of our expertise. So whether we're talking about my son or Dr. Vitato or we're talking about me, um, all of us work together. It's interesting that every Tuesday at 4 o'clock we have a meeting and we discuss complicated cases. So sometimes we may not have that opinion for you right away. But um, take advantage of that and, and call and just say you heard us on Sel Helping Seniors of Brevard. We can arrange an appointment for you. Um, and you'll have the complete examination uh um, for um, for fifty dollars to helping seniors of Brevard, just call the office at three two one two five nine eight thousand. Yeah, thanks, Doctor Sheldon. And now we're going to shift a gear and talk a little bit about shifting a gear in your new car. I hope uh, because we are talking about the helping seniors car raffle fundraiser. So this is the eighth annual helping. It's hard to uh, hard to believe that we're actually that far into it. Eighth annual helping seniors. This time we call it Choose Your Adventure car raffle because there are six excellent cars. They all come from uh, A.J. Hire's family of car dealerships. So you get a real set of choices in this. Um, there is everything, Dr. Sheldon, in this from a um, 
the the Mitsubishi Outlander, which is what our winner the last year took. Uh, uh, we also have a Kia Sportage in there, which is the car that our winner took, I think, the year before last. And uh, on top of that, we still have some really nifty cars that you can choose from. There's a Mazda 3, which is a cool little sedan car that you could uh, take. It's actually quite elegant. Um, there is also a Jeep Compass in the running this year, as well as a little sporty Dodge Hornet. And uh, even a, a pick up truck. There is the Chevrolet Colorado midsize truck in there. So, Dr. Sheldon, we have a lot of um, neat cars in there. It all winds up on Sunday, October 27th, once again, back at Mark Pilock's amazing American Muscle Car Museum. He's going to give us the run of the place inside and outside. So we're setting up for a really great Choose Your Adventure uh, grand raffle drawing. You don't have to be present to win once we pull that winning ticket. If your name's on it, you got the cards. That's simple. But if you're in town on uh, Sunday, October 27th, it's going to be a great day, family friendly out at the uh, museum. It's just going to be a fun afternoon uh, there, right there. And he's just down the street, Dr. Sheldon, from your office. He's at uh, uh, he's at 3500 Sarno Road, and you're just literally right up the street from there. Yeah, what's going to be interesting this time is that it's going to be a daytime, as you said, daytime and nighttime events. So for those of you who may have found crowds a little bit too much uh, last year, we've totally taken care of that problem. It'll be a family day. You'll have plenty of time, uh, both inside and outside, spending time in uh, Mark's be- beautiful museum and outside the museum. And um, and and take advantage of an opportunity to, to win a car. So what yeah, a great day. October 27th. It's going, to, it's going to be so much fun. And listen, so with that, the reason I asked you to grab that pencil was not only to jot down that October 27th date and kind of get that uh, locked up on your calendar, but I also want to tell you a couple of things that are going on related. We're going to be actually out. Uh, uh, we're actually going to be out tomorrow evening at the Friendly's Car, Truck, and Bike Show. That's the one that happens right there at Friendly's, uh, uh, right there on the um, uh, corner where uh, – uh, Oh, uh, sorry, not O'Galley. Yes, O'Galley comes into um, uh, A1A. So right there at the, at the Friendlies there. And we're going to be there from 5 till 8 with Bill Antonetz's great uh, Friendlies car and truck and bike show. And then on Sunday, we're actually going to be back at the American Muscle Car Museum because the folks who put on the second annual all-European car show have invited us to be out there with the cars. So we're going to have those cars uh, that's 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the American Muscle Car Museum. It's a great chance for you to come out. We always bring out a car or two from the Helping Seniors Choose Your Adventure Car Raffle so you can get up close and personal, check it out, decide which car you would want to drive home when we pull your winning ticket October 27th. One ticket is $25, five for $100 donation. You can um, also get them uh, at every place that um, – uh, uh, like the Helping Seniors Office right there at 1344 South um, Apollo Boulevard, second floor, the uh, Joe Senior Resource Center. You can, Dr. Sheldon, you should have them there at your office uh, right there on Sarno Road too. Um, you can call us at 321-473-7770 and you can uh, get them directly online at helpingseniorscarraffle.com. There are lots of opportunities for you to be able to get uh, these tickets and certainly call the Helping Seniors of Brevard office. Uh, it's going to be a great day on October 27th. It will have opportunities to meet together, talk together. You'll find many of the people who support Helping Seniors of Brevard will be with us on that day. And so you hear a lot of us who are on the radio on a regular basis. You'll be able to meet us in person there. And we're happy to share experiences. We're just happy to say hi to you. So we hope you'll you'll join us and, and we'll be together. We'll be, be together on that day. There are many events that you can depend upon. Uh, and you can see that just by going to helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Um, I don't have the number right now, now, but certainly if you have a problem, and it's a senior problem. It may not. Even, it may even be a junior problem. Call Nancy Deardorff at Helping Seniors of Brevard. You'll have the opportunity of discussing things with somebody who's a trained nurse who's been working in uh, senior living and senior uh, disabilities for many, many years. She has. She, there's a broad base of knowledge right there, and you'll have the opportunity of working with her, of deciding um, perhaps different resources or finding different resources that are available to. 
to you right here in Brevard County in order to be able to um, uh, con consult with them. There is an answer to every problem, whether we're talking about medical care, dental care, food care, uh, whether we're talking about where to live um, and how to take uh, a situation where you're gradually maybe deteriorating a little bit, you need a little bit of help, but you're not quite ready to move into a senior living facility. Nancy provides a lot of resources. I had um, one of our staff members right here who was who 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 had a problem and uh, she had a problem with her mother and she was able to call Nancy and be able to get uh, a good. Um, uh, good information um, from Nancy right there. So the lots of opportunities within the Helping Seniors of Brevard Network um, and just contest help, helpingseniorsofbrevard.org and we'll be happy to help you. That's it for this edition. Our This Wednesday edition will be together every week uh, on Wednesday. Just join us for Helping Seniors of Brevard Radio. Bye-bye. <laughs>